Today we celebrate Monday of the 28th week in ordinary time, and our Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Anthony J. Capriglioni by Paul and Christine Egan. If we could together recite our entrance antiphon. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman, the other by the freeborn woman. The son of the slave woman was born naturally the son of the freeborn through a promise. Now this is an allegory. These women represent two covenants. One was from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. This is Hagar. But the Jerusalem above is freeborn, and she is our mother, for it is written, Rejoice, you barren one who bore no children. Break forth and shout, you who were not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the deserted one than of her who has a husband. Therefore, brothers and sisters, therefore, brothers and sisters, we are children not of the slave woman, but of the freeborn woman. For freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise you, servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Who is like the Lord our God, who looks upon the heavens and the earth below? He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. 
according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. There is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it. Because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. There is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is something greater than Solomon here. There is something greater than Jonah here. It is Jesus. Jesus wants to be in a relationship with each one of us. St. Paul, writing to the Galatians last week, you may recall, he said, Oh, you stupid Galatians! Why are you backtracking? God has freed you from that. And why are you going back there? Well, as we continue in the letter to the Galatians, St. Paul is going to explain some of this to them, all right? Using an image that they would have understood. Abraham and his wife Sarah were childless, childless. And God said, I'm going to give you a son. But Abraham is like 80 years old. Sarah, at this point, is 70-something. And so Sarah says, let's face it, I'm not going to have kids. I'll give you my slave girl, Hagar, as your concubine, and you can bring up offspring that way. We let God off the hook. In other words, we don't trust God enough to really believe what he said. We don't trust him enough to entrust we don't have faith enough to be faithful. And so, they have a son, Ishmael, who at least traditionally is thought to be kind of, uh, that's how the Muslims would trace their lineage back to Abraham. So what a mess. Imagine how much better the world would be if we did not have this fighting between the Jews and the Arabs. Oh my gosh. So they would have known this enmity. Right? There weren't even Muslims back then, by the way. We didn't have Muslims for another 800 years. <clears throat> but St. Paul uses this image because after Abraham has a child with Hagar, God comes back. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I promised you a child, and it will be a child of the covenant. And that will be with Sarah, your covenant wife, not with a concubine. And they have Isaac. Now, I'm very fond of talking about our relationship with God as being that of a wife. Hagar would call Abraham master or Baal because she was a concubine. She was not equal. She was not a free woman. Sarah would never call Abraham master or Baal because she was a wife by covenant. She was an equal. She would call Abraham Ishi. Ishi means my man. And the corresponding is Ishti, my woman. That's what a husband and a wife would call each other. In our relationship today, do we look at God 
as our God and he looks at us as his people? Or do we fall back the same way St. Paul was cautioning the Galatians? He says, don't go back to the old way. Do we fall back into the habit of thinking God is a master? Do we think of him as an angry judge? Or do we think of God, and by God here, I'm referring more to the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, but it is still the Father. There's only one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do we look at Jesus as a groom and we are the bride? You cannot make a slave love her master. You cannot force that. God does not want to force us to be his bride or to love him. He wants us to do this freely. A slave only has to do what she has been commanded. A wife, she goes further, she does more because she loves her husband. That's the relationship that God has with us. That's the relationship that God wants us to have with him. And this is not something new that St. Paul made up. In uh, Hosea, in Jeremiah, in Ezekiel, God says that he's going to make a new covenant with his people. In the old covenant, they fell back to calling him Baal, which means master. It's what a concubine would use of her master. Instead, he wants us to call him Ishi. They should have known that this was coming. This should have been clear to the Israelites. That's why Jesus speaks of this as being an evil generation. Not because they were more wicked than anybody else, but because the groom is here. And when the groom comes, we cannot think of ourselves as a slave, as a concubine. We need to look at ourselves the way God looks at us, as his bride, as his lover, as his most precious person. Then we will do not only what we are required, but we will go beyond. Let us bring our needs and the needs of all the world to our wise and loving Father. For the church, the bride of Christ, all its members and leaders, that we may grow in faith and love, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations that all people work together for the establishment of peace and justice for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on our labor, that our work may be fruitful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are burdened, especially those burdened with the effects of the pandemic, may they find relief, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the real realization that all life is a blessing to be cherished from conception until natural death we pray Lord hear our prayer for all of those who have died especially Anthony J Capriglioni for whom this mass is being offered may they enter into their eternal reward in the wedding feast of the Lamb in heaven, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Glorious God, you sent your only Son to establish a relationship with us that is meant to last forever. Open our eyes to see and know your love. We ask you to hear all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people, Israel, through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim, journey, her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the works of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for, him, for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. May the name of the Black and Blood of the Savior Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us for this evening. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. When the Lord appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Again, God's plan is that we shall be like him. He does not want us as a slave. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.